In this video, we're in Scotland, looking for a mega rare sea duck and also eagles. For those who haven't seen the last video, we're doing a near week touring around the UK. And at this point, well, you've guessed by the intro, we were in Scotland. And our first stop was Musselburgh near Edinburgh, where a very, very rare sea duck had been there for a while. The bird we were looking for, and I hope I pronounce it right, is a Stenager's Scouter. With some haste, we walked through the Musselburgh Lagoons Reserve to the seawall. Walking along the seawall, there were plenty of eiders in close, but no sign of our target bird yet. Luckily, there were some other birders there, so we wandered over to see if they'd seen the scouter. And, with a stroke of luck, they had. One of the birders had eyes on it, so Kaylee set up the scope, trying to follow directions from the other birders. The Stenages scouter was amongst a flock of reasonably rare velvet scouters, so it was a job of trying to follow instructions scanning through these birds to find the bird that looked a little bit different. Pretty soon, I spotted it. The differences between this bird and the velvet scouter weren't huge. The head of the bird was slightly more sloped, the beak was a little darker, and the white mark under and behind the eye was a little larger. Also, the bird was somewhat thicker set and appeared more squatted and shorter necked in the water. And although this is quite a list of little differences, at a distance it's not always super easy to pick out. But with the help of the other birders, we did find it. Before I go into how rare this bird actually is, I've got to mention there's only six birds left to hit our target. That in itself changed quite quickly. As we were scanning through all the scouters, something else popped up that wasn't one. It was a grebe. And lucky for us, it was a Slavonian grebe. Another bird we need for our year list. This one was in its winter plumage. In summer, this species has yellowy orange feathers across its head. But now they look a little bit more drab. But no less welcome to us. That takes us down to five to hit our target. Excellent. Now back to the Stenager's Scouter. This species is rare, really, really rare. With only one confirmed record until now that was in 2011. Apparently there was one photographed in 2014, but that's not been accepted yet. And this bird that should be accepted has returned to this area for the last three years. So yes, we are a little late to the party, but we were waiting until we were in the area. Usually this species breeds in Arctic tundra in eastern Russia, migrating in the winter to the coasts around Russia, Japan, South Korea and northern China. So we're exceptionally fortunate to see this in the UK. By this time the other birders had gone, so I wasn't too confident in refinding the Stenager's Scouter, but somehow I did. Happy that not only did we finally get to see this bird that had been around for the last three years seasonally, and that we refound it ourselves. And of course, it's a lifer. We could have stayed here all day, but we did have to move on. At this point, we hadn't made any plans. So we walked along the seawall, discussing where we were going to go next. Before long, we did have a plan. This meant quite a long drive, but first, Olivia had to change her jeans. Look at the state of the bottoms of them. Hey folks, we have had a success, which is about time. We've had the Stenagers, I'm hoping I pronounced that right, Scouter, which was on the sea with a whole bunch of velvet Scouter, which is cool. We are late to the party, we do know. We are late, I know. <laughs> a lot of people have seen this bird and we've not made it up here, so I'm glad we did. It was at a bit of a distance, but according to one of the other birders there, it's the closest it's been that he's seen, so. so that's pretty cool. We also got an extra bird in the shape of a Slavonian grebe, which is super. So that's two for today. Right, we're off on for a big drive now to Oban as we've got a ferry booked for eight o'clock. So on to Mull tomorrow. Keep with us. We drove from Eastern Scotland and Edinburgh all the way to the west to Oban where we'd booked a ferry to go over to the island of Mull in the Inner Hebrides. We are in Oban now. We've got a ferry at eight o'clock. It's now, I don't know, half five or something. So we've got a bit of a bit of a wait, but 
we're going 5. over 556. 5.56, yeah. So we're going over to Mall this evening and we're going to be there until Saturday lunchtime. Let's see what we find there. When we arrived, we were really, really hungry, so we headed down to the harbour to grab some of their famous seafood. What have you got, babe? I've got seafood butter. That looks amazing. This was delicious. It wasn't for Olivia, she had sausage and chips from the local chippy. We had an hour or so before our boat, so we took a wander around the harbour, seeing this young great black-backed gull on the way, and then headed round a few shops for a bit, until it was time to go back to the van and get on the ferry. As we left, it seemed reasonably calm in the harbour, but as we left the harbour, things got a little bit more choppy, and for those who've seen our videos before, you'll know I really don't have sea legs. Thankfully, before I turned green, we got to the other side and we drove to our overnight destination. In the morning, we woke up to one of the most spectacular views. We'd parked on the grass next to a beautiful bay with mountains in the distance and birds on the shore. By now, the girls were up and about and Kaylee was making bacon and egg butties in the van. While she was cooking, I looked over the scene in front of us to see what birds there were on the shore. Immediately obvious, there was a large group of geese, and closer in, there were groups of small waders, lots of them being turnstone, some getting very close. Another little wader that was pretty numerous was ring plover, with this one almost oblivious to me being there. And although it was lovely seeing these birds really close up, they weren't the birds we were really here for. Morning folks, we are in Mull this morning looking for eagles. That briefly explained it. Last year from this spot we had a lovely but distant view of a white-tailed eagle in a tree. So as Kaylee continued cooking breakfast, we took turns with the scope, scanning the treetops around us, hoping for a sight of a white-tailed eagle. And it didn't take long until our wishes were answered. I was watching a gull on the shore and something caught my eye behind me. It was the white-tailed eagle we were looking for. It flew along the tree line and eventually landed in a conifer in the distance. Kaylee jumped up, bacon and egg butty in hand, to check this lovely eagle out. What are you looking at, babe? White-tailed eagle. Whilst we were eating breakfast? <laughs> with a bacon butty? Absolutely. Life doesn't get better, hey? There's nothing better than that. Eventually, the eagle flew off we got back to looking at the other birds around us, like this rock pipit, thinking how lucky we were to see this eagle so well. But things were just about to get better. I noticed a big bird moving around in the shallow water. Upon inspection, it was the white-tailed eagle. It seemed to have caught a young gull and was in the process of drowning it. This, although being pretty brutal part of nature, was incredible to see. This process took some time, but ultimately, the gull had no chance against the size of a white-tailed eagle. These birds are absolutely huge. As we were watching this scene in awe with our jaws dropped, it got even better again. When the gull was definitely deceased, the adult eagle was joined by a young one, who took over the kill. After flapping around stood on the gull for a while, it started to settle down and eat. And at this point, the parent wandered off. We watched this youngster feeding for some time until we noticed that the adult bird that was nearby seemed distracted by something that was in the air. And it turned out it was another young white-tailed eagle. This individual circled round at a distance before flying away and then coming back and circling almost over our heads, giving us incredible views of this bird in flight. It's no wonder these eagles are nicknamed the Flying Barn Door. This individual seemed to disappear in the distance. By now, we were all reeling with excitement, having viewed something you'd only see in a TV wildlife documentary. But things were about to get even crazier when another adult eagle turned up and joined the other one and the young that was still eating the dead gull. And as we continued to watch, another youngster turned up making the total up to four eagles present sat on the beach. Honestly, morning birding doesn't get much better than this. We stuck around for quite a while watching the eagles. And of course, this was another bird for our year list, leaving us with only four more to hit our target. 
The four eagles stuck around for a while, and as one of the adults took off and flew along the beach, we decided it was probably time for us to go and explore the island. We had another species of eagle to add to our year list, the golden eagle. So we left the incredible eagle strewn beach behind and headed off in the van onto the single track roads which meander across the island, dodging livestock on the way like these hiding cattle and being witness to some incredible scenery. We navigated round the island at a slow pace, stopping occasionally in passing places to look over the small secluded bays and the birds that were present. Hey folks, so we've had the white hey, we've had the white-tailed eagle already. Um, we've done a bit of driving around looking for golden eagle, which we're intent on trying to find for a list. Uh, we just stopped and thought we saw some, but they were buzzards. A real shame. <laughs> this island's beautiful. Though. Absolutely stunning. Molly's just breathtaking. Incredible. Right, we're going to get back on the road and keep on driving around, see if we can find our golden eagle. We did notice a good number of female goosander, or at least I think the female, if not their young birds. We didn't see any males at all. I'm not sure why this is, so if you know, please tell us. One thing we did notice is there seemed to be a grey heron fishing in almost every little bay, and as we were exploring when we found some parking, we'd often stop, if only just to take in the scenery. At one point we had a little lunch stop in a bay with some boats where I did notice a few hooded crow sat on the boats. This species replaces the all-black carrion crow in northwest Scotland, Ireland and the Isle of Man, and I think they're pretty cool. By this time we still hadn't found any golden eagles, so drove into the middle of the island, away from the coast. This area was incredibly picturesque, with mountains and small locks. We did spot this field of deer, and yet more buzzards. Having failed so far to find a golden eagle, we headed back through the island towards the coast again, and on to the north of the island, to the main town in Mull, Tobermory. Hey folks, we've had a day of driving around Mull, which is an absolutely spectacular place. We haven't found the golden eagles yet, although we had amazing views of white-tailed eagles this morning. Um, we're finishing off our evening currently, we're in Tobermory, <laughs> which you may recognise from a kids' TV show a while ago called, what was it called? Balamori. Balamori. She was slightly obsessed. Yeah, she was a bit <laughs> obsessed. We're going to have a quick wander around and then head back to our parking spot and try again in the morning before our kind of midday-ish ferry. As we wandered from the car park into town, there was a little stream and sat on one of the rocks in the stream, there was this beautiful grey wagtail. We continued on past the harbour into the town. By now though it was after six and most of the shops had closed. So Olivia decided to have a paddle in the sea. She went in first in her wellies. These got waterlogged so she took them off and ran in in leggings and socks. Rather her than me, it's too cold for me these days. Eventually, before it went dark, we headed back home with a wet Olivia, passing this lovely stag on the way. When we arrived back, we made a late dinner. Well, it was more like supper because it was nearly nine o'clock and we watched the sun go down. It had been an incredible day, having mental views of white-tailed eagle. And although we didn't get the golden eagle, there was still the next morning. So we called it a night and went to sleep. We woke up to a really bright day with a group of grey-like geese in front of us on the estuary and some feeding in the field behind us. As the girls were getting ready, I wandered on the beach to see what was about today, and I was greeted by a few smaller birds, like this lovely pied wagtail that was feeding close by. And as I was sat on a rock watching that wagtail and some others too, this amazing meadow pipit landed on a rock only a few feet away from me, giving me incredible views. It was at this point I realised I hadn't seen the white-tailed eagles yet, so I began to scan the treetops and the shore in front of me, and it didn't take me long to find the two juvenile birds. They were well in the distance on the shoreline, but as much as I looked around, I couldn't locate the parents. So we all got in the van and set off on the road again, slowly towards the port. We only had a couple of hours as our ferry was at around lunchtime, 
So we drove round taking in the last views of this beautiful island and the lovely wildlife that's here. We did stop at one point as there were many little birds on a piece of grass. These turned out to be turnstones. As I was scanning through them I noticed one that was still in near summer plumage. What a stunning little bird. Further down the road we noticed a little bird jumping about on some rocks. This is a wheatier. This individual and every other wheatier in the northern hemisphere will soon migrate to Africa for winter. Safe journey. Hey folks, we're still looking for golden eagles. We're uh, taking a route through kind of um, the middle of the island and then onto the ferry for a bit. But we're hoping on this drive we might see something that isn't a buzzard. <laughs> or, we've a seen, or a kestrel. Because we've seen lots of buzzards and kestrels. But still no golden eagles yet. Stunning though. It is absolutely beautiful. Just it's everything just is just breathtaking, yeah. Wow. Our trip to Mull was nearly over as we drove nearer and nearer the port. And although we hadn't got the Golden Eagles, it had been amazing. And as we boarded the ferry, we were all a little sad to leave. Regardless, we did have to. And luckily for me, the sea was much calmer than our crossing here. So we stood on the deck and watched Mull disappear into the distance. There were some birds on the sea here, mainly gannets, with some flying past and some sat on the sea. There were also a few guillemots too, but unfortunately I didn't get any footage of these because they were at quite a distance. Pretty soon as we got closer to the mainland, Oban came into sight. And not surprisingly we had a flyover from another buzzard. Hey folks, we're off of Mull now, unfortunately. We're going to miss it. I know, yeah. I don't want to go on. <laughs> Sad. Although we did have to head back towards home, this had been an amazing trip to Scotland, and especially Mull, with its breathtaking scenery and amazing wildlife. It's a place I would truly recommend visiting, with the only warning, it's tough to leave. It's been a really cool week. We picked amazing. up... Yeah. Not so much fun. I saw yeah. Highland cows. She I saw got a Highland cow teddy. Yeah, she's she's over the moon. We saw uh, at least five new species for the list. I want to check all my buzzard photographs just in case there's a golden eagle in one, but um, I'm not holding out too much hope for that. We've still got five more to go. We've still got five more to go. Um, we had great views of white-tailed eagles, uh, Stanage's scout, which was a lifer for all of us, bar-tailed goose, bar bar-headed goose. <laughs> my my French which was a uh, life for Kaylee. What? So that was excellent, and we've seen a lot of the UK too. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please like. Please subscribe. Live. <laughs> and please press the notification <laughs> bell. We should have rehearsed We're going this, shouldn't home we? For a shower, mate. Yeah, we need week. to go. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon. Bye. bye bye. We did make a small stop on the way back, but that's in the next video. See you soon.